Hey everyone, this week I share some exciting news. I wrap up soaps in a different way to ship them out to customers. I go birthday gift shopping for my mom and mother-in-law. I show off some new jewelry and then fire up the bath bomb press for the first time in a long time to make goat's milk bath bombs and shower steamers. I have six orders on the board today and I'm going to be packaging my candles and my soaps to the people who decided to buy from me um, after watching Friday's video and thank you guys so much for doing that and I thought it would be fun to show you because I'm going to be packaging these soaps in a way that I haven't shown before on YouTube. These bars are scented in rose gold fragrance oil and the listing on Bridal Berry's website so that it uh, discolors the soap to a tan color but I don't see it affecting the colors at all in the soap. In fact, it looks almost the same from when I first cut it. I really love how the swirls turned out, but my favorite part of the soap is the top where I sprayed some bronze mica on the top of there. I really love how the swirls turned out, but my favorite part of the soap has to be the top part where it has that bronze sheen and the little rosebud. I think it's so pretty. Because I don't have my usual packaging studio space, when it comes to shipping these orders out, I just wanna make it as quick and easy as possible for me to do that. So when it comes to these soaps, I'm not gonna be boxing them in the boxes that I made using my Cricut. I'm just gonna be slipping them into these bags here. And these are paper bags, but they protect the soap just as well as a biodegradable shrink wrap would during shipping, only it's much more eco-friendly. I printed these labels out using online labels. This is labels and their Maestro uh, label editor. And I'm just gonna tape it down. And this is how it looks. And I also have an ingredient label that will go on the back, like so. And now the soap is ready for shipment. When I'm shipping fragile things like glass candle jars or sugar scrubs in glass jars, I like to use these corrugated boxes that um, I can assemble pretty easily and quickly. I get these from Staples or Uline. But if I'm just sending a soap, these guys are pretty sturdy and they'll do just fine being shipped in a padded envelope like this. And it saves me a lot in shipping to be able to do that. One or two soaps slips into these envelopes really, really easily. So here's an order where they just ordered one soap. And after sealing it, it's good to go. I haven't tried two soaps, so I'll see if it will be okay. I think it will be if I do them sideways. First one, then let's try the other one. Perfect. And that fits two of my soaps perfectly fine. So everything is all packaged up. Now I just need to weigh them and I have this weighing scale. And I write down the weight on the little sticky notes that I have on here. And once I've weighed all of them, I can create their shipping labels and drop them off at Chit Chats tomorrow. I bring all of my shipping labels at home. I use the Munbin thermal printer and someone asked me how the quality of the print is and it's really, really good. And I really like how when you get to the end of this process, it goes so quick because all you have to do is print out your labels, peel them off and stick them on your package. So for example, for this, I match this name on the sticky note here to the label that I printed out, peel it off like so, just put it on. Oh. Oh my God. Put it on like so, like have it centered. And these labels are waterproof, smudge proof. I 
I'm really glad that that task is done because that really frees up the rest of my week to make the two products that I plan to release when this video comes out on Friday. And it's gonna be bath bombs and shower seamers. <laughs> I'm still working on the formula for the shower seamers. I'm really loving my jewelry today. These two dainty necklaces are from Ana Luisa and so are these earrings. It's actually one earring that looks like it's two, which is really, really cool. And here's some footage of me unboxing that package yesterday. Got a package. Ana Luisa sent me some more of their jewelry pieces. I love their eco-friendly packaging so much. I got sent three pieces. Let's start with this one. Looks like I got a new pair of earrings. Look how beautiful these are. Wow. I've been loving very simple jewelry lately. It's real life how you can pair with any type of outfit you have, whether you're going to somewhere fancy or you're just spending the day hanging out at home. I feel like these pieces are appropriate for any type of day you're having. So these are earrings that just loop around and go into your ear. And once these earrings are in, they kind of give the illusion that they are two earrings in one because of how it's looped. Next, we have this beautiful dainty necklace. And when it comes to the necklaces that I wear, I really prefer them to be the type that you can wear every single day. I go with any outfit and usually that means for me, gold, a thin chain with very minimal details. There's two holes you can loop this in to adjust the length. And here's what it looks like once it's on. And I love that. It's so pretty. Barely their jewelry is really on trend right now too. Here is a very similar necklace, but this one has some very small stones in there. And the great thing about dainty necklaces is that you can stack them and layer them without looking overdone or it being too much. And that is what I'm gonna do with these two to see how it looks. And I also really love how expensive this jewelry looks. If you visit their website, which is linked down below, you'll see that these pieces are very, very affordable. This is what the two of them look like, layered. And I think that just looks so pretty. And these with my earrings, my outfit is complete. I mentioned that Ana Luisa jewelry is super affordable, but you can get even more money off by using my discount code over here for 20% off your order. And yes, it is true, we finally sold our house. We got the offer last week and I didn't wanna announce it to YouTube in the case that the sale fell through, which has happened before. So I just wanted to play things safe and wait until things were a lot more concrete before telling you guys, but yes, we sold our house. And we have to be out of here in the middle of May. I have to start to pack things, I have to start to organize things. And Kale is gonna be here in a couple of weeks with his dad to help with a big move. Oh man, like it sounds like it's far away, but I feel like these two weeks until Kale gets here, it's just gonna fly by super fast. In the meantime, I still will be formulating and making things and showing you guys, still shipping those products out because now I'm not gonna get disrupted by having to show the house that the good news gets even better because Kale and I actually also found the perfect house for us. We put in an offer and that offer was accepted. I'm not gonna show you any teasers about the house, any footage of us looking at it. I need to wait until that house is not listed on the market um, before I let you guys see what it looks like because I just don't want people to guess where I'm actually living. But the house itself is literally our dream house. It's a lot smaller than this house, but the way it's laid out is perfect and there's the perfect soap studio space underneath and that fills our needs perfectly fine. I said perfect a lot there, but I absolutely cannot wait to show you guys and give you a tour once we get there. I am just really glad to have this whole moving ordeal getting closer and closer to the finish line. It's been so stressful, but the worst of it is over. <laughs> you ready to move Dems? <laughs> Today 
is Monday and I have a pretty busy day ahead of me. I have to drop off those packages at Chit Chats. Then I have to get some groceries. I'm in this weird spot now where I need to buy groceries, but I have to be able to eat them within the next three weeks. So I'm not moving a whole bunch of food. I'm kind of doing a eat everything out of my pantry and freezer challenge right now. And then I'm gonna go shopping for a gift. Both my mother-in-law and my mom have birthdays within days of each other. So I'm going to shop around, try to find them a gift. My mother-in-law watches my videos. So I don't know how much of that I'll actually show. And that's pretty much my day today. Although I do want to start to organize things to start packing them up in boxes. These are boxes that my neighbor's kids brought over the other day. They were so cute about it. Yeah, I'll we'll happily take whatever boxes people have to give me. I have really great neighbors. Dempsey loves sitting right there on our deck. And I think she's really gonna miss having a spot like that in our new house, but she'll probably find a new spot she'll love to hang out in. Making a card is always really hard. So here are the things that I got for my mom, my mother-in-law, and my sister. My mom and mother-in-law have birthdays, and my sister is just for Mother's Day because she is a mother. Ooh. So I picked out some nice cards for my mom and mother-in-law and my sister for Mother's Day and I got each of them some fun snacks. There's this Mementi Gourmet chocolate uh, coffee praline thing. My mom really likes coffee and chocolate, so I think she'd enjoy that. For my sister, I got her some Lindor chocolate, and for my mother-in-law, I got her some peach slices. And in addition to those items, we have some handmade soap that I made myself. This is the rose gold soap that I made in the last video. I also have some of the cocoa bergamot combo butter body butter <laughs> that I made a while back. I still have a few jars, so I'm gonna give those away. This is such a good body butter. I used up all of my personal jar and I was tempted to keep a few for myself because I really like it, but I'm gonna share the love and send some to my loved ones. <laughs> I walked all around Winners, but I know my mom and she would rather pick out something herself, so I ended up getting her a gift card and that's all gonna be sent to her and my sister and my mother-in-law in the mail. So I'm gonna make the packages right now. I was yelling at my Google Home for the past 20 seconds trying to get it to play my music until I realized that the power is out in my entire house and it's the whole block because we have a neighborhood Facebook group and people are reporting power outages in their homes too. <sighs> so I don't know how long that's gonna last before the power charges up again, but Oh well. Speaking of my neighborhood, last night I was taking Dempsey for her last bathroom break of the night and I look up, I always look up because Calgary has some of the most beautiful skies, the clearest skies I've ever lived under. And sure enough, I saw the twinklings, the shimmerings of Aurora Borealis, which I've talked about before. I've seen it one other time, but this time it was so strong and vivid. Look at this. Oh my gosh. This is the strongest I've ever seen the aurora. Wow. Oh my God. Okay, it has steadily gotten stronger and stronger since I've been standing here. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Wow. It's so green. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, look at that. What? Okay, this is amazing. Just had a video chat with Kale and I showed him this amazing band across the sky. Wow. Very cool. And you can hear the excitement in my voice. I'm just so in awe and I didn't want to rush inside and get my camera for better footage. I didn't want to miss a second of it because I also wanted to call Kale and I FaceTimed with him and he could see it on FaceTime as clearly as I did. And it was so, so beautiful. I feel really lucky that I was able to experience that 
a couple of times living here in Calgary. It's something I never would have thought that I would be able to see and witness this far south of the North Pole. Oh, jeez. Cheer that. <laughs> that scared me. I think the power is back on. Those are the fire alarms in this house and they are hardwired to the house. So I think that's an indicator that we've got at least some power, but my stove is still turned off. Or is that an indicator to tell me that they're not on because the power's off? <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know what's going on. Welcome to today's project. If you haven't guessed by now, I am making shower seamers, something that I have not made in a really, really long time. And I have begun to dissolve my menthol crystals in with my essential oils that I'll be using today. I'm gonna to be making a eucalyptus lavender shower seamer. And I'm making this a little differently than what I've done in the past. I've removed the oils as some of you a lot of you suggested the last time I made shower seamers so we'll see whether or not this works but if it does I will be selling these in my shop once this video goes live Friday and as you saw I crushed up these menthol crystals um, as much as I could um, just by sticking them in a baggie and then using a spoon to just kind of get them into smaller and smaller pieces and what that does is just helps it to dissolve a lot faster. So I'm just gonna set this aside and wait until this completely dissolves before moving on to my next steps. For the shower seamer, I'm also gonna be using the bath bomb press to make them. I tried using the bath bomb press before, but I think there was a huge flaw in, first of all, my recipe, and second of all, the type of mold that I was using. So with this recipe, I hope everything works out and the mold that I'm gonna be using with the bath bomb press is a square mold. It's a three-piece mold. Basically looks like this. And since I'm pulling out my bath bomb press and the compressor, I figured I might as well make a bath bomb while I'm at it. So I'm also going to be making some goat's milk bath bombs scented in lavender eucalyptus. I'm keeping the lavender eucalyptus theme going. <laughs> and for those bath bombs, I'm gonna be using the medium round bath bomb mold from the bath bomb press. And while those menthol crystals are dissolving, that's what I'm going to be whipping up. So let's get started on that. So first things first, with these bath bombs, I'm going to mix all of my dry ingredients. I'm gonna start with our baking soda. And I'm not gonna color the bath bombs today. I'm just gonna be a white bath bomb with a little bit of cornflowers for decoration. Just simple, keeping things simple around here. It's been a long time since I've made bath bombs. I have been on a big break from them. <laughs> so just like with a soap, I'm excited. I'm really pumped to be making bath bombs. The weather in Calgary has started to warm up. I don't know if that'll affect these bath bombs. I'm gonna try this without any sort of humidifier going. Although I do have a small plant humidifier going back there. So I have my baking soda here. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this baking soda, right in the middle there. I'm excited to be making this kind of bath bomb because I've never made a eucalyptus bath bomb before, but I was I was craving it, which is why I wanted to make eucalyptus shower steamers as well. Here's the water. Now we're gonna get this going in the KitchenAid mixer. And while that's going, I'm gonna do the rest of the dry ingredients in here. Cream of tartar. SLSA. We're trying something different with goat's milk powder. And then some kaolin clay. Into the mixer this goes. Now we're going to do all of our wet ingredients. We're going to use a tiny bit of cocoa butter. Like that much. <laughs> and then I'm going to zap it to get it melted. And while that's melting down, I'm going to measure out my other wet ingredients. Polysorbate 80. That's going to go right in with the cocoa butter. Use some hemp seed oil. So 
some isopropyl alcohol. And then my essential oils. I'm going to be using eucalyptus and lavender together. And that's going to go in the mixer. And now that that is in there, I'm going to start up the compressor and get my machine going. So I've already added my citric acid to my mix. And to add just the littlest bit of decoration, I'm going to add some pinky red cornflowers. Just like that. And when I fill up my mold, I like to do it pretty loosely. Let's go with the top. I like to make a little bit of like a furrow in the middle. And then I press down to make a bit of a Saturn ring and then I overfill the rest of it. I'm just gonna remove the excess, the excess on the edge. And then I'm going to press. Okay, that pressed pretty good. Let's see if this comes out in one piece. Wow, <laughs> and it, it came out perfectly. My recipe is pretty good. It's adapted really well to this Calgary climate, but if I wanted to keep this round, I have this bath bomb tray from the bath bomb press that has a round cavity, and that is how you get really good, oh, He's calling me. And that's how not only you get round bath bombs, but pretty strong bath bombs too. So I'm just gonna put that down in here and we're gonna keep pressing. And when you're pulling mix up from your bowl, try to get it from all sides. I think the mix dries the fastest at the top. Oh, I forgot the corn flowers. The mix dries fastest at the top. So you wanna pull the mix from the bottom so that you can get your mix as even as possible. So I'm just gonna scrape off the sides again. This smells really good. I love that lavender scent with the slightest hint of eucalyptus. I just did it one time that time. Shake, shake, shake. There you go. Oh man, so beautiful. I love the look of a white bath bomb. <laughs> I really do. I think it's just, it's so simple. Curious to see how these will perform and I will do a demo for you guys tomorrow. So nice. I think I can get at least five bath bombs out of this, out of this particular recipe. This is the most satisfying part. <laughs> Could you get these bath bombs without the bath bomb press? Yes. My recipe works really well also with hand press molds. So if that's all you have, you can still make good bath bombs using that and it should be fine. But I find that the bath bomb press bath bombs are the strongest and they survive shipping really, really well. Bath bomb number five and then the last one. Wow, this made exactly six bath bombs. I am so pleased. And that pressed just fine. And there's bath bomb number six. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna move along and attempt the shower steamers. That is a completely different recipe, so we shall see whether or not it actually presses okay. But in the meantime, I'm gonna bring these guys downstairs where it's dark and cool and they can harden. If you want to speed up the crystals melting a little bit, you can microwave it. I like to do a 10 second blast at a time. Just give it a gentle boost. So for the shower steamers, it's gonna be a, mainly a mix of baking soda, citric acid, and cornstarch. My original recipe had oil in it, and a lot of you guys told me that's not safe for the shower, and I agree, no one wants a slippery shower so i'm gonna try this this recipe the only oil in this are the essential oils some cornstarch yes we're recording <laughs> we're now going to measure out some water and that's going to make our shower steamers hard we've got some distilled water here and i'm going to add these both to my mix over there. Now last, I'm gonna add my citric acid. 
Okay, I think we're ready. <laughs> this is my first time using this mold, if you can believe it. How much should I put in here? Okay, let's get the scale going and then just fill it and see how much that amounts to. If I just fill it loosely, this comes up to 73 grams. Let's see what size shower steamer I get out of that. If it presses successfully. So I just put the stamp piece on top like so, and this will come down and push that. I think that's the idea. And the way I like to remove the bath bombs from this type of mold is to flip it over. I expose the bottom of it. Then I push up. Oh. And then I have this guy, which is a pretty nice size shower steamer. Oh, and he's pretty solid too. There you go. I'm gonna set him on this tray to dry. They smell amazing so far. So far, so good. Nice. It's like a giant sugar cube. So I managed to get 15 shower steamers and my nose has never felt clearer, but these are pretty solid shower steamers. They're not completely dry yet. They need at least 12, 12 hours before I'm comfortable wrapping them up. I feel pretty confident that these are gonna ship pretty solidly because they look pretty solid. I'm really excited about this recipe using the cornstarch. I think it will improve the performance. I have a little guy here, a little mini shower steamer that I'm gonna test out tomorrow. And I'm gonna test out one of my bath bombs too as well tomorrow and let you guys know how that goes. Show you the demo, not me in the shower, but I will show you this guy in the shower. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'm gonna bring these downstairs and clean up the giant mess that's over there that I'm not showing you. <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Good morning, guys. Here is the bath bomb the next day, and it smells really good, so I'm just gonna toss it into this bath and get it going. Let's see how it fizzes. got some nice foam off of that goat's milk. This bath looks so nice to jump into, and I'm gonna do just that. Here is a small shower steamer that I made for myself to test out. Let's go ahead and do that. Wow, I am incredibly pleased with how both of those turned out. They're both really, really relaxing. I'm having a bad allergy day, I'm reacting um, to Jiggy, my cat who I'm allergic to, a little bit more than I usually do, and that's why I'm just a little stuffed up right now. So those two products of the eucalyptus have really helped to curb those symptoms just a little bit, and I feel a little bit better after that bath and that shower. The size shower steamer that I used was about 20 grams, and it lasted my entire five minute shower. So I'm guessing the bigger block which came to about 70 grams, will last at least two to three showers. Just keep it at the bottom of your shower, let it dry out, and then it gets wet every time you take a new shower. But I really, really enjoyed it. The scent of the menthol was so, so nice. If you guys wanna get your hands on this, then you can make it yourself. And I have the link to the recipe on my Patreon down below, or you can even buy this off of me. I have, I think, four bundles that I'm gonna do. It'll have two shower steamers and it will include one of those bath bombs. So it'll be a two shower steamer bath bomb bundle that's available on my Etsy, also linked down below. You can also make the goat's milk lavender eucalyptus bath bomb yourself at home. The recipe for that is also on my Patreon. Just check out my description box down below. It was a really soothing bath bomb. I have psoriasis. You can see it's kind of going away so bath bombs that contain clay or powdered milk, I always really enjoy the feel of my skin 
afterwards. So for next week, true packing begins. I've been putting it off long enough. I need to start to get my whole life organized and packed away into boxes. So I'll be showing you guys that as well as the projects of two other products that I'm gonna be making and releasing and sharing the recipes too. But before I go, I wanted to give one last shout out to Anna Luisa for this beautiful jewelry. I have been wearing these two necklaces stacked uh, for the past week and I've been getting so many compliments on them and I just love how they go with literally every outfit that I wear. I just love the simplicity and elegance of everything. You can find the link to Annalisa down below as well as a coupon code that you can use to save a little bit of money. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.